start with one thing and that's brows. I think your brows are so much more important to a person's face than they actually think. So brows, I think really is something that all women need to have a brow pencil or a brow powder or a brow pomade, whatever is better for you. Even just a brush up of the hairs gives the illusion of lift. And I think brows are something that people do go, oh, I'll skip that. I'd rather do mascara and eyeliner. Fair enough, but the brows really hold everything up. And that's why we like them a little bit thicker these days. Um, you, we talked about the droopy lid. What are some of the tips and tricks that you can do in your makeup chair that can give the illusion of a lift? So brows, I think, really is something that all women need to have a brow pencil or a brow powder or a brow pomade, whatever is better for you. Even just a brush up of the hairs gives the illusion of lift. And I think brows are something that people do go, oh, I'll skip that. I'd rather do mascara and eyeliner. Fair enough, but the brows really hold everything up. And that's why we like them a little bit thicker these days. Speaking of lashes and lash line, let's talk about eyeliner because, you know, when uh, often when we're younger, we're a bit more experimental. So we play with more color. I certainly did. And when I was, you know, in my teens and first discovered eyeliner, it was in your eye, around your eye, cat's eye. And it was quite yeah. heavy-handed with the eyeliner. Is there a more youthful, youthful way to wear eyeliner? And should we be making a few adjustments to help sculpt, lift, and shape? So as we age, it's all about more um, not doing this to the eyes. It's bringing it out like that. So I would always smudge a little bit darker on the outer and smudge up almost like it's looking like eyeshadow. That's the best type of liner to use. And don't think it's black all the time browns, olive greens, even some plums for some uh, brown eye colours. And if you want a metallic, metallic eyeliners can be placed in the inner part of the eye. So you get a bit of fun here, a bit of colour where you can see it towards the tear duct, but keep your depth always on the outer to keep that balance. Okay, let's talk about under eyes. I mean, this is one of the most popular areas for fillers, it, um, yep. PRP, um, laser treatments, lifting. What can we do with makeup? Um, to address two things. One is the hollowness, which is why you would have filler. And the second is, uh, you know, the, the grayness or uh, a bluish purplish hue that's so super aging. Yeah, I, I probably think this is probably in all the work I've done over the years in terms of my writing, um, even doing my segments on the Today Show, everyone wants to know how to look fresher under the eyes. It's pretty much the most commonly asked question for makeup artists. There's really not one product. I always use two. I think I've discussed this with you before as well. I get quite dark under the eyes. Um, so when I am doing, you know, big TV segments, I use the two concealer trick. Basically, you need two shades of concealer to really get the under eyes popping. And if you've ever watched, um, say, the Kardashians, you know, they kind of started the whole um, tutorial uh, behind the scenes makeup artistry thing years ago. They always use that really orangey colour concealer concealer first because of their skin tone and then a brighter on the top. So for me, I'm a, bit, I'm a bit lighter in skin tone, but I still use a really peachy yellow concealer first, which actually isn't my skin tone. But remember, it's going on an area that is darker, like you said, grayish, bluish tone. So you need to correct that tone and then brighten. You can't put the light fabulous one on just by itself because it will go gray and your under eye will look ashy and probably worse. So if you correct with orangey, warm, yellowy, even a peachy tone, depending on your actual skin tone, correct the area first. It, it may look a bit dull, that's great. Then you put the light over the top and press it in, you get magic because you've corrected and then you've brightened. Once you've done the two, the uh, correct and brighten, then get an even lighter concealer. So one shade lighter again and dot on, on the actual area where the hollow is, normally right in that area there, like a dot, 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 dot. You don't blend it into the eye area this time. You get the smallest brush or a mini, mini beauty blender and actually dab on the hollow dark area. So that little trough, they call it, will actually then be lifted forward because something that's dark obviously recedes. So the brighter concealer over the top again on that little pinpoint area will then bring the uh, shift the eye forward. So let's move down the face because that was fantastic for, for the eye area. And um, the other area that, you know, people spend a lot of money on is um, around uh, the cheeks <laughs> for filler um, and, you know, laser, ultrasound, lifting devices. 
Can we fake, uh, you know, fuller, higher cheekbone? Yes. Yeah, so I know we, I kind of mentioned earlier about contouring and how face structure and knowing what highlight and shade is, is so important. So just to kind of, you know, recap, high, um, shading, for example, using a bronzer or something in darker tone, even a darker foundation or a darker concealer can work under a cheekbone. So I've got a mirror here so I can see my face, but there's like a, um, you know, a, a, a bone that you can feel, shading goes under the bone and that only gives you structure and a sharper, say, cheekbone, jawline, you know, um, eye area, whatever it is you're putting under the bone. But something like a blush, not dark, so it needs to be pinkish, peachy, that kind of brighter shade. If you put that on top of the shading, right on the plump bit, the kind of fatty part of the cheek, that's actually going to lift. Contouring alone, everyone goes, oh, but I've contoured, but I still look a bit... It's because you probably contoured too much or you haven't then balanced it out with something brighter to lift. So that sharpens and shapes. So a round face, for example, would love that to cut in but then they still uh, want this kind of freshness here. So peach or pink blush on the apple front part. So I actually do it quite high, quite, quite uh, rounded and high there will give that lift and that structure. So you kind of need both, almost like the concealer trick. It's, it takes two products to really get the best cheek effect. Cream or powder? You know what, lately I must admit, I've been using a lot more cream, probably since December. Every makeup I do now, I use a cream blush. I just think it just looks fresher. It tends to blend better into the skin and it does look slightly more dewy to give that freshness, which I absolutely love as a makeup artist. Can you teach us about uh, makeup nose jobs? Makeup nose jobs. Well, we know that uh, nose contouring is not obviously new. It's been around for a long time. Um, so I really think that the nose contouring definitely can work, which is shading down the sides of the nose. So the panels here, you can either just do a light brush down the actual panel of the side nose. If you have a quite a wide nose and you want something really dramatic, obviously you can do a much more pinpointed um, contour look, but that's a bit more artistry. So I would just suggest to get a fluffier brush about, you know, small, medium, and just dust the sides rather than doing a two lines look and always highlight the centre part of the nose to bring that part forward and the shading on the side goes back. So you get a nice, slim, trimmer style nose. What can we do with our lips? I mean, you know, um, lip liner has always, has come in and out of fashion, but obviously fuller lips are a marker of youth. Um, we lose volume in our lips as we age. Um, and also I believe that this area of the, uh, the lips uh, lengthens as well. Uh, what do you do to trick a fuller lip um, with makeup? I think lips are actually probably the easiest in a way because most women are used to doing a lipstick or a lip liner, uh, whereas contouring and shading, some of them just aren't used to that or don't know how to do that. So they tend to watch a lot more tutorials about that part. But the lips, I think women, uh, most of them have been using lip liner for a while, lipstick for a while. So basically always think about the, the centre of the lip, the really central part of the lip always needs to look that little bit lighter because once again, the light will attract and make that centre part look larger and fuller. And then we darken or deepen, I should say, the outer parts of the lip. So that could be as simple as using, um, say, a chocolate brown uh, lip pencil and lining the whole lip of the pencil, but on the outer areas here, just shading it in a little bit more, but keeping the centre pretty much free of any lip liner. Then using a nice beige or a peach lipstick over the top, it will, it will go over the brown lip lovely, but the center will still look brighter because you've left it free or adding an extra gloss in the center or adding a highlighted gloss, like a frosted gloss in the center. So lip touring, as they call it, is quite common. Sometimes you can even use two lipsticks. You might use a red to start with and then a brighter pink just in the center to bring a different dimension to it. So it's like highlight and shade, shade and highlight. So you always highlight the very center of the mouth. Um, I yeah. want to go back to where we started, which was skin prep and uh, complexion, which really is your signature. The celebrities that I know you work with always have the most gorgeous skin. Erin Holland, um, you know, she glows from the inside out. Nikki Phillips, Kate Waterhouse. Um, and I know you've worked with uh, international celebrities as well. I remember when you worked with Giselle, she was incredible. Yeah. Um, and Miranda, who you mentioned, uh, who's on our podcast as well. How do you, 
what you mentioned less is more and that we probably need to look at changing up our complexion products mm. what what should we be doing as as we're getting older to to give a more youthful glowy um, appearance to our skin I think um, obviously time is obviously an issue for a lot of people and I totally get that because I say some things and then I see people go, who has time for that? And I'm like, I, I, I totally get it. But people always go, well, how come they have that skin? How come that person's glowing at that age or not even an age thing, just they look so good. It actually is because we do spend time. You do massage techniques. Now we have all these beautiful rolling products and guashes that can really massage and they actually do make a difference in how your skin is feeling, how taut it is, um, and how products are absorbed into the skin. Uh, basically, I like my foundation on all my clients to look as realistic as possible. So probably just the most basic tip that anyone can adapt is using a tiny bit of face oil on top of the cheekbone area that's the area that we all want to have a beautiful glow a really beautiful youthful look 